Praise God, everyone, and find it. It's the chapter 8 from verse 5. Amen. amen. Please say amen. Amen. Praise God. And I will read. <coughs> if it pleases the king, she said, and if he regards me, it's a different version. If it, uh, it's an NIV version, sorry. If it, you can follow. If it pleases the king, she said, and if he regards me with favor, and thinks it the right thing to do. And if he is pleased with me, let an order be written over ruling the dispatches. That's Haman, son of um, Amedatha, the uh, Adigites, the vibes, wrote to destroy the Jews in all the king's province. For how can I bear to see this order fall on my people? How can I bear to see the destruction of my family. Praise be to God. I will stop there. Um, bless the Lord, everyone. Praise I'm just going to ask you to stretch forth your hands upon me. Praise God and that the Lord will bring back everything to my remembrance. And I will leave a word with you tonight in Jesus' name. Praise God. Peace stand. Thank you, Jesus. Most righteous and eternal Father, correct. God, I honor you. I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. So I worship you and for you. And I ask you to make that I stand in your name. Lord, I pray that you will stretch forth your hands upon me. Lord, I pray that you will move sand from its sacred boxes. And Lord, I pray that you will bring my head to you. And I remember us tonight. 
Christ. Lord, I will give glory and honor to your name. Mighty God, that you will get the glory, the honor, the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight, I was asked to bring a 20-minute word. I don't know if I have so much. But nonetheless, I'm going to speak. Praise God. From the book of Esther, praise God, you know that Esther became a queen. Praise God. Praise God. Um, she was in the, the king house and she came in the king house because of the other queen, Vashti. And we know that Vashti was the first queen, but because she decided that she grew wings and she disobeyed her king, when he called her to come to, you know, among his friends. Praise God. Yeah. You know, as a man would have her wife and he wanted to show off her wife. And he said, wife, you know, come and meet my friends. And then, you know, the wife would frown and behave bad. You know, the, the, the husband would rise up and he, he, he feel bad. And he didn't want to put away that wife. Praise God. So, yeah. Yeah. so it was that the king put away Queen Vashti, because she disobeyed the king. But I look at it and I said, at times, God has to let some things happen to, you know, cause some things to work together for good. Yeah. Amen. Bless the Lord, everybody. Yeah. So the king put away Vashti and they were they went for a search and a search for another queen. And the Lord would have it that as the word of God said, they find favor in this um, lady. She was beautiful to look upon. They find favor in her. The people find favor in her. The king find favor in her. Praise God Almighty. Praise God. You know, saints of God, all of us as Christians, we should pray at all times and ask the Lord to let divine favor be upon our life. Praise God, everybody. Praise God. You know, even in the workplace, people will look at you and take you for granted. People around your surroundings, in your neighborhood, they will take you for granted. But when you decide to go to God in prayer, humble yourself, and let the Spirit of the Lord direct you, people have to look up to you. Even when they don't want to grant your favor, they have to grant your favor. Because of the glory of the Lord upon your life. Bless the Lord, somebody. So they find favor in this young woman and so it is that uh you know she became the queen but in the time of those time there was this man a man praise god he was one of the king right hand yes and so he feel like he can do anything to anybody and talk to any anybody kind i don't know him have the thing locked, you know, yeah. so you can do any of when you when you see him coming, you're supposed to bow and everything. Praise God Almighty. Praise, God. Praise Jesus, everybody. Praise the Lord. But the word of God speaks about Queen Esther. Praise God. Um family. Praise God. And Mordecai. And Mordecai was Queen Esther. Um, some type of family, uncle, I think. Uncle, yes. So Mordecai now, he was like humble. Mm -hmm. You know, he was more, more like watching, looking in the spirit and see what was going on. But there was a time when this A man decided that he want. Uh, Mordecai to bow and Mordecai decided he was not going to bow. So he tried to draw up some schemes against him. Praise God. He goes so far to draw a scheme against him and against the Jews. And he did not know what he was getting himself into. There are times when the enemy used some people to rise up against you, to destroy you, to tear you down, even to want to kill you. Praise God, but they don't know what they're coming up against. They don't know the God in you. They don't know you from nowhere. Somebody that say, you don't know me from nowhere. You don't know whom I represent. Praise God. Glory. 
Praise God. I would I always say when I was in Jamaica and the enemy bringing a fight to me. If it's fighting one, the fight you're gonna get. Because I know where to get my victory. Bless the Lord, somebody. So Amen decided he's gonna touch Mordecai and his whole generation. My God of heaven. Can you imagine? And so to cut it short. Try to write in my 20 minutes. When you look, praise God. Amen. Praise God Almighty. Went to the king. Draw up some allegations. Praise God against the Jews. Can you imagine? And then it is like your sense of that situation ever come on you. And it seems like this is it. I'm doomed. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm saying, have you ever been through some situation where this is it? The enemy is saying, this is it. it Your back is against the wall. They want to kill you. Mm -hmm. This is it. This morning, I talk about myself. I don't know about anybody else. From the weekend coming on to this morning, when I heard about my son, even my daughter, she was saying, listen, I don't know if this is going to continue with, with, my, with, with, with my brother. So I said to her, listen, we have to trust God no matter what we look. One thing God said, he worked upon the good desire for us and he said, we'll never leave us, never forsake us. I'm telling you about when situations are facing you right in your face. It seems like it is the end, you know, we are old. Because if, if me imagine, a man decides that him go set up a decree and a man and Mordecai family, the Jews are going to be slaughtered, they're going to be wiped out. Praise God, somebody. But because he know how to humble himself, he said, you know, I'm tearing clothes. Them call it, them they in a sackcloth and ashes. And he cry out. And he said in the word to, to Esther, his niece, and said, listen, it's time to go into some fasting and prayer. A matter of fact, he said, time may I ask you, go to the king. Hmm. Esther said, I can't go to the king like that. If the king not hold out the scepter mm. for you to come, you can go to the king in my big trouble. Mm. But you see, when the, the favor of God is on your life, yes. holy oh, God, and fire, hallelujah. Yes. Shanda. You see, when you seek God, that's why people have to know that we must learn to seek God. People have to know that we must learn to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and seek God. Because some of us, we don't know who God is. We don't know what he can do. He specializes in things. Don't make things impossible. And so, Esther said, I can't just go before him like that. So, look, she decided, what? you know what? All right. She was even trying to escape from going to the king. Because she said, we can't go to the king like that. But Mordecai reminded her and said, listen, if them kill off, if them coming at the Jews, remember, you are not safe either. You are not safe either. We are to know a sense of God that if it never touch one of we, it touch all of we. It's time for us to come together. Hallelujah! Glory be to God. It's time for us to come together in unity, yes. in love, yes. and tear down the strongholds of the enemy. Yes. So, Mordecai, remind her, listen, you're not safe either. Mm. So not because you're in the king of thinking that you're safe. Remember, you're a Jew. Mm. Remember, saints of God, if the enemy touch me, you're not safe from him. He's going to touch you to your knees and I'm home. Yes. So if you see him touch me, if you rise up and fight with me, yes. and call down God upon him, call down God for tear down every strong wall. And so, Mordecai said to Esther, listen, you don't know if God allowed you to come to be a wife of this king for such a time as this. Now, I don't know about you as I said, but I know about myself. I know where the Lord has called me from. He has called me out of sin. He has called me out of the darkness. He has called me to come out from among them 
and to be inseparated. Marco Shandai. Sometimes people will look at you and they will hate you without a cause. And they will look at you and bad mind you because of the anointing that they see on your life. But they don't know where you're coming from. If they used to know you when you were out here, they wouldn't even look at you. Holy Ghost and fire. So God take you out now. He wash you and cleanse you now. Praise God Almighty. And people just get up and hate you for no reason. Praise God. And so it is. Mordecai said to Esther, you don't know if God allowed you to be here with the king for such a time as this. So you got to do something. So she decided. You see what the woman do? When don't you have some people that want to put woman in the forefront? Then one say, woman, to sit down and keep quiet. Quiet, oh, praise God Almighty. And so it is. Esther, she call a fast. Three days and night fast. Everyone, everything should fast. I'm telling you about fasting and prayer. She call a fast. Praise God. Hallelujah. And they went into fasting. And during that fast, or at the end of the fast, she showed herself. You know that when you go, when you go and fast in India, there is a difference. Mm -hmm. Your countenance, everything. Change. You're walking and it seems like it is not you walking, like you're flowing. It never happened to none of you yet. Hey, mm -hmm. You open your mouth to say, Jesus, Hako and something else come out. Yeah. Yes. Praise God Almighty. I remember when I was going to a situation, oh, I'm not taking up the time, and I went on some fasting, five days and three nights, and at the end of the fast, I don't even break it as yet, and when I opened up my mouth to testify, I feel a fire gushing out of my belly, rushing up to my mouth, the only thing that was coming out was, thus said the Lord, hallelujah, glory be to God, fire was gushing out of my belly. So you can imagine when Esther go on the fast and when she come out and the king saw something different. Only thing he had to do was force to hold out the scepter to her. Praise God somebody. Prayer changed things. Fasting turned God hand to hack. Fasting and prayer turn God hand to hack. To rise up to destroy your enemies. Glory be to God. The word of God said, the weapons of our warfare, it is not carnal, but it's mighty true God to the pulling down of stronghold. We have to recognize that flesh and blood cannot do nothing. It's just a failure. And we know that God is a spirit. And when we see God in the spirit and call upon him, he will come. Praise God. So she see God in prayer. The king hold out the scepter and he called her. And she make her request be known. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Everything that Amen did, the decree that he made up against Mordecai and Esther, everything backfired mm -hmm. on him. Everything was reversed back on him. The pool that he made to put yeah. Mordecai on are the gallows that he made. He was the one that was thick upon it. Praise God Almighty. The king went back into the book. They recorded, they have some book that they record some people, stuff that were good deeds. And when Haman decided to come to the king to get the final whatever he needed to destroy Haman, the king said, No man, but we can't destroy a man like this. May I go search and see what happened. Yeah. You see, when the enemy wants to destroy you, yeah. you may not strong at the time when he, when he set out to destroy you, you know. But when God looked back and see where you're coming from and look back and see the things that you've been doing for him, God will have mercy on your behalf. And God will fight for you. And so the king went back into the record book and he saw that Mordecai have done a good deed. The guards wanted to murder the king. Mordecai went to the king and he told the king, 
and the king destroyed the guards and saved the king's life. So at the time when Amon went to the king, the king remembered that Mordecai had done a good deed. And so everything that Amon wanted to do to Mordecai and the Jews and Esther, especially when the king heard that Esther was a part of that thing that Mordecai wanted to do. Listen, when God reversed the harder, it will be terrible. Hallelujah! Glory be to God! When the enemy thinks that he's going to dig a hole for you and you're going to fall in it, because God finds favor in you and because you're a servant of the living God, I just want somebody to know tonight. Stop a pity party. Mash up a party. And start trying to God. Echo Shana, glory be to God. We need to stop a pity party. We need to stop being sorry for ourselves. And use what we have. God said to Moses, what you have in your hand, he said, use it. Today, the brother was saying, prophet was saying, he always said, we must learn to exercise the authority that God gave to us. Some of us, we got some fire in our belly and we don't want to use it. We like to sit down comfortably and be fed. We need to rise up. God is waiting on us to rise up and be warriors and be leaders. Glory be to God. That is why so much false prophets are rising up. Because
I feel like my connection, my connect to the connection. I can't find my connection. I search for my connection, but I can't find it. But when I start to focus and look on Jesus and look at the cross, here I find my connection. So God is lining you up to your connection. To have a witness in the house. Wherever you start and wherever you go, somebody has to carry your truth. Yeah. You can't get just get pregnant by yourself. You have to be a man to get your pregnant for you to be able to come. So it must be a connection. Adam and Eve is a male and a female. It must be a connection. When the Lord tell Noah, Noah build the ark, and he said, carry the male and the female. He said, carry them a peer. Peer by peer. So after God line you up to your connection, your father said, go to my next connection. How can I reach you? How I get this ministry? God led me up to the connection. And after God led me up to the connection, he said, you're going to travel. For this connection with the church, there's a high connection. So he led me up to the New York. He led me up to the Philadelphia. He led me up to Hartford. He led me up to Bahamas. He led me up to Antigua. He led me up to Jamaica. And now I'm going to come to Antigua. Ark. 
and we not going to open no the window. Because we open it, we cannot even open it. Because we already cooked. We want to open it, you know. But we can't close, we can't open it. God, when he closes it, no man can open it. So the connection is now. God is calling you to start to travel. God is calling you from reading one scripture per day. God is doubling it now. We are on the border time. And once our people are there, the enemy is going to creep in. So you're going to miss your connection. And I don't know why you don't want to miss the connection tonight. Because the connection comes with gold, not bronze, not silver. But, but, gold. So God is lining up to your connection. If you're not prophetess, God is going to line you up to a prophetess to release your gifts. If you are not a prophet, God is going to line you up to a prophet to release your gifts. If you are not an evangelist, God is just lining you up a minister, a deacon, a reverend, a, a evangelist, a minister. God is lining you up now to your connection. Identify your gifts and what purpose you have on the earth for. Everybody have a purpose, and when you're identified, you are the end of the situation. Holy God, thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to call it Minister Cleveland for five minutes, and then I'll hand over to Prophet Mark Daniel, and then we just do what you want to say. Can you continue to stand, please? I'll be feeling the fire in the side of the street, right? Can you feel the fire? Can you feel the fire? Because I was bench. Huh. And they will cross me from next one to the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. And they will say to me, I will say to myself, a mess. Mm. But they will come again and they will jump across me. 
Sometimes I said, it's better be, I will be playing football because I will get a five minutes. I will be a reserve when I get five minutes to play football. Yet, when I came to this church on Friday night, was invited by this young lady here. I went to Town Hall, Merkel, Merkel Arena, it was called. Yes. Everybody there get prophecy besides, of, besides Ecclesia. Oh, and they mocked me in the journey. But the depending on the Lord, it was, I was eaten up inside. Jesus. And I picked the best smile out. Jesus. So let us say, we're going to break through and deliverance. I've never heard about this church. I said, who is that? Where is that? I said, Miss Carly. I said, who is she? Because I never know her, honestly. Okay. I remember walking through that door and the same shot said, I love New York or something. I love this shirt. And I sit there. It was packed. My sister said, I'm ordered downstairs. I said, I'm going to get my word tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to get my prophecy tonight. <laughs> and I came in here, right there. The lady was preaching, and she prayed for three people. And then she came to me, and she grabbed my hand. And I said, oh, yeah, baby, 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 baby. I opened my eyes. Yes. I opened my eyes, she said, all I can hear, I thank the Lord, I called you. No, that wasn't the first time I hear that. I hear that in Jerusalem. From Pastor Winston Baker. And to keep on saying it, I was so struck. I couldn't say a word. Then a hope God hit me on my heels. I dropped about three times. And she was saying, I call I can hear. I called you, I called you, I called you, I called you. And yet, I said, yes, Lord, you call me, but I'm not preaching. I'm not even teaching. I'm not doing nothing for the kingdom of God. And it makes me wonder. And I go home and I think about it and I pray about it. I say, Lord, you say you call me, but I'm still bench. I'm not doing nothing. I get up and read, I pray. Sometimes I say, let me sit and pray and I'm going away. Because then I see no answers and I see nothing happening. But I always have this love for God. And I say, everyone keep on. And then it was the Monday morning. I just call my phone. He said, Lord, tell me to tell you you must come to church Friday night. It's going to be 15 to 20 minutes. I was shaking in my shoes. I said, yes, mom. Yes, mom. But he don't believe me. I didn't, I didn't, me, I did not believe him. Oh, Jesus. I finished, I said, preach me, preach. And I feel the presence of God came on me. Jesus. And I said, Lord, if you want me to go to preach at this little church, tell me what I should preach about. Seconds later, I feel this rush from heaven. Whew. Later, with the issue of blood for 12 years. And I ignored. I get in my van and I pray and I have to do my jolly little work. Coming down to Friday now, Wednesday, I said, Oh my God, you know say, I tell a lady, say, Yes, I'm going, coming to church. And I didn't look at the Bible yet about that, chapter about that. But I get on my knees and I said, God, if you set me up then and I look bad and you look bad enough, you look bad too? Yes. I said, you look bad because you set me up then and I'm going to preach. And I, 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 I didn't I hold up my two times in my life. I hate mics. I'm going to get up and say something and hold a mic in my hand. I say to my friend, but I didn't tell her nothing about it because 
I don't know what she's going to say, so I said, follow me, please. <laughs> I asked my daughter to come with me. And I asked the next young lady to come with me. And I came upstairs and looked through the window and said, ah, right. I know what's people tonight. So now we look back. <laughs> I went downstairs. It doesn't hit me now. And I went downstairs. And this church started. People started coming to the church. I said, oh my God, it's all back. And just get ready for me to come on. I walked up in that parking lot and I was so scared I was scared because I said, Lord, you sent me this place and I don't know where I'm going or not where people will say they might like me. And I, and I can't talk good like Jamaican people talk. I can't do the park lot thing. And then later, and my daughter came up in the car and looked at me and I started to cry in the parking lot right there. I cry and I walk up now, Papa. I said, Lord, no one failed me. Release the fire of me. Release the fire of me, Lord. Release the fire of me. Release the fire of me. Lord, release the fire of me. Release the fire of me. Release the fire of me. And I'm like, I I said, Release the fire. Release the fire. Lord, release the fire of me, Lord. Make sure you're not. If I go to the battle, I yoke back to it. I don't want to lean up. Release the fire of me, Lord. Release the fire. Release the fire, Lord. Release the fire of me, Lord. Yes. Praise God. I was crying in the parking lot. I said to her, My daughter, and the lady, I said, Let's go. I came and sat right behind me. I last chair. I was trembling like a leaf. <laughs> like that, I was trembling. And I said, she goes down, she goes down, she goes down, she goes down. Oh, she took out some money as well. And I came up here and I was so scared. I tried to hold my head down, not to look in nobody's face. Mm. But when the power of the Lord hit me, I could not contain it. And I went through one. The next morning, I can't believe I did what I did. I have that little to do. Today I have that little. But God can use a donkey. Yeah. He can use you, 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 anybody. Back to the scripture. The scripture lesson is taken from Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse chapter verse four. We find it the same on here, so time is that time. Reading from the King James Version, it says. Then the word of the Lord came on to me, to me saying, Before I formed thee in thy belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of thy womb, I sanctified, sanctified you thee. And I ordained you, ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And he said, I, and he said, I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, but thou shalt go to all, to all, to all that I have sent thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of thy faces, for I am with thee, to deliver thee, said the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hands and touched my mouth, and he said, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this time, this day, set thee over the nation, over the kingdom, to root out, and to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, and to build, and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see the rod of almond tree. Then he said, Lord, unto me, thou hast set thee, set, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my words to prepare this. But the Lord says, they call somebody from the womb of a mother. Yes. That means the Lord's hands is upon you. 
So why now are the people or the teachers or the pastors say you have not been called? You must sit down and hold your seat until you are called. In churches today, we have a lot of people that are called by God and the pastors and the prophets and the prophetess and the bishops. No. But they rather leave them in the pew or in the benches and use somebody else or their friends. Because they are jealous of what God placed on you and what the anointing that is on your life is not on their life because everyone has have a different calling, a different anointing. Some are called to be pastors, some are called to be bishops, some are called to be healers. And some are called to prophesy lies. <laughs> they call this self. They are a part of the Antichrist. They came up from among us, but if they were with us, they would have stayed with us. But they go aside, each and every one of them, and they form the cliques and they form the churches and when they form the churches they come back when they're not working things not work out they come back like little cows with the tail between their legs but people they don't know there is a god in heaven who is watching everything they do and there's a time and place for everything under the sun. Jesus is watching. He said, before I form you, I know you. That chapter really fixed my life. Because in my family, I'm the fourth child in my family, and my sisters and my brothers and my whole family, they are seven-day Adventists. They do not believe in the fire of the Holy Spirit. And then we speak in tongues, we are talking stupidness. But yet, when they are troubled, or a spirit in their house, they send Cleveland to pray. <laughs> now when I go and I pray and do what I have to do, there's nobody to cover me. So what happens to Cleveland? All right, mm -hmm. Cleveland mm -hmm. get back. Oh glory, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. Come on now. True. They invite me to the church, I go. But if I wait and went into our church, it said all the devils worship on Sunday. So if a devil is casting out a mess, devil of your house, what kind of devil is he? <laughs> we have to be careful of what we say nowadays because we say things that we hear people say and we have pastors trying to speak like a next pastor, trying to preach like a next pastor, trying to do the same thing the pastor is doing. Yes. But you have to do it your way. Yes, and, and that's God's way. As I read on here in this Bible again, they say, that time is saying, I cannot talk good. When I talk, they say, I'm sound like a Japanese. So they used to call me, instead of Cleveland, they used to call me Japanese. <laughs> and I did hate that word Japanese. Mm -hmm. They make fun of me, they tear me down. 
but they could not kill the path of sin. That's right. They tell me I'm not going to preach or I'm not going to go to heaven because I have a mark in my forehead. And they call this mark in the forehead the mark of the beast. They do me a lot of things, but my love was for still for them because they are my sisters and brothers. Not knowing one day that they have, every one of them have to run back to me. The same one that they tear down and they say they have the mark of the beast in his forehead is not going to heaven because of your mark for life. It gets so bad, I start to believe it. Yeah. But then, you know, when you were tearing me down, I was praying. Yeah. I was asking God, what can I do for these people? How can I fit them? But I had a praying mother. Don't care what they say about me, but I said, don't believe it. They'll see one sort of calling you one day, and it comes to pass. Oh, yes. I grew up with my father. My father was from Clarendon, Jamaica. I never see him, never know him. I was sent to live with the grandparents in the next district. And I thought everything was fine and dandy till the grandmother started on me. It was more boys and more girls there, but they sickled me out of them. At 12 years, this is a tent, as you seven day I got this tent, pitched next door by us. I can remember the pastor from the States, Mr. Mac, Mac, MacDonald, Macmillan, sorry. He preached a message one night. When I walked to the tent, the man shot hands on. Trying to read a Bible for myself. I walk into that tent and I try to get close up to the front as I can. Just to read a Bible to know my Jesus. Twelve years old. And he said, tomorrow is Saturday morning. Is anybody here for baptism? I look around in that tent that night and I read, I read, and I say, I cannot. He said, What if you die tomorrow? Don't care what the age you are, you can still go to hell. Not having a father figure in my life, I walk to that little pulpit and I said, I want to baptize at 12 years old. I didn't think I knew what baptism was. I got baptized. I feel nice until I get home. And when I reached home, they was waiting for me. And they started. First thing they said, he baptized because he's the one girl in the church in life. And she's American to make it worse. I take all the bad words and all the bad talk I took it. Until one day I said, I'm going to run away, come back to Georgetown. And I did. Not knowing my mother was waiting to take me back. And up there again, till I finished high school, I had it hard in life. I used to walk from Peace Bay. Straight to Bordentown School, no shoes on my feet. Those days, it has to be called Tar Road. When the star, when the sun hits the tar and it starts to melt, and you step in the tar, it's hot. Hot. But I said, I thought, well, just look at the school to learn something. I'll be all right. Coming back from school, a place called Gun Square in Bond Town. I had to fight to go to school in morning time and fight to go back home. 
It was set against me. Praise the Lord. I go to school and get in fights. My grandfather said to me, I hope you win. I couldn't tell him nothing. So one day he said, you is a Kelly. A Kelly never lose a fight. I went back to school and I pick fight. Yeah. And I beat them up. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And I go home, not knowing that on my way home, they was hating for me. Sometimes if I see them before they see me, I cut to the beach. Take a beach break. And run up the beach. And I get way up the road, I come up the road, I say, are you looking for me? Yeah, I am. But they cannot catch me. This is surely that God had a purpose for me. Not knowing that one day that I will be standing here and telling some part of my life. But God knows everything. So I ask him, God, today in my life and in many of your life today, you are sitting here. Some of you are sitting, the Christ tell me this too. Some of you are sitting on his. I know God covered you, 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 and also you. It's time for them to step up and step up. Not forgetting about you, sir. You made two revolutions. You're going to do something. And you have to be the way. And you have to preach the gospel. You have to step up to the plaque and deliver the word by saying the Lord. And you will be charged. Is any shock? If a car is on the right, you, you see, yes. And you see, right? Yeah, that's right. But you are waiting until your child is born. While your child is in your stomach, you can talk to your child. You can preach to your child. You can sing to your child. You can. You can prophesy unto your child what you want her or she to be. And then your child is born. Give it back to the Lord. Dedicate it back to the Lord. Amen. And you see the big shift in your life. That's no ordinary child in your character. Take it from me. Take it from me. And my sister, you also have to step up. Because it's a heavy anointing on your life. On you, not you, the doctor, not she. You. It's on your life. And you never feel it till you reach that age of men. You gotta explode. They know they're afraid of you. Churches don't want you. Churches in Jamaica. And if you don't enter back here, God's gonna show you a church that you, when you walk into that door and you lift your hands, it's like release the power of all this atmosphere, the atmosphere. I'm going to turn into a chapter and read it for you guys, and I'm going to read. If you can 
chapter, the first Corinthians, chapter 12. Can you find it to say amen to me, please? Amen. Okay, this this verse 28. Can you find it to say amen, please? Amen. And God had said some of some in the churches, first apostles, secondary prophets, third, teachers, and after that, miracles, then gift of healing, help govern devils of tongues, of tongues, are all apostles, and all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, yet hear all the gift of the healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but to convert earnestly, that the gift, best gift, and yet shown unto you a more exact, exactly obey. First, uh, chapter eight now. The same, I mean, the same, uh, the same chapter, but verse eight. Please start from the beginning. Uh, go to verse four, please. Chapter twelve, verse four. Okay, let's read it. Now there are diverse of gifts, but some same spirit, and there were difference of demonstration, but the same Lord, and there were diverse of interpretation, but it, it is the same God which brought it all in all brought it all in all. But a manifestation of the spirit of the every man on the prophet. One is given by the Spirit. Another the word by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gift of healing by the same Spirit. To another the works of miracles. Prophecy. And to another diverse of spirit. And another diverse, diverse kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. But to all these workers that one of them is self same spirit provides uh, to, to, to every man the sailor as he will. For the body is one and that has many members and all the members of that, of that body, body even are the body of also is Christ. It was in the chapter that we talk about. I was trying to explain to you that everyone has a gift. Everyone here have a gift. Some of healing, some of miracles, some of prophecy, some of teachers, pastors, bishop. We all have a gift. We all can do something for the kingdom of God. So don't sit on your gift. Don't make your gift just die. Use the gift that God gives you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. 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 What a woman in the Holy Spirit. What more could we ask for? Amen. I just want to give God thanks for his shifting and his moving tonight. Because after I leave here today, I pay the price. So while you might know, I, I wonder what I'm talking about. I went home and I, we decided that my wife was going to cook. And uh, she in the room was taking some of clothes and I decided I'm going to cook. And I start and I couldn't finish it. I was weak as a rat. I fall up in the bed and I said, babe, finish cook for me. And she said, no problem, sweetheart. And while I was lying there, she come and before she come and feed me, I feed myself. Based on my experience with heat and my chef, I was like 110 degrees hot. And she said, you have a fever here, some garlic tablet. I 
is there. Not that I feel the tummy, but that's just not normal. But you give me the tummy, but I hope the tummy. And lie down, and then I went into the room. The bathroom door, and to lock the room. Door. And the Lord instructed me and said, anoint your head and drink a cock of olive oil. And when I anoint my head and I do what the Lord speak, I put my hand on my head. I tell her to lock the door because it's not going to be normal. I said, spirit, a fever of sickness, I command you to leave my body now. I identify you. And I know who you are. Yeah. This is not normal. I command you to go now. Jesus. And I pray. And I start to feel. My body feels different than since I've got. I go downstairs and I do some work. And my bus. And I pack up my bus. And I can tell you. When I came here. The whole fever gone. My oh body feels fresh. Yeah. Who could it be but God? Hey God hallelujah. I tell my wife that the devil don't want me to moderate tonight because I knew I was going to moderate tonight before a pastor. Tell me. And when I came inside from the destiny of my I realized what I was doing. The Lord said, I night everything in here, even the clock at night, even the, the tambourine at night, and I, everything in here, yeah. even the envelope. Even the olive oil, I anoint the olive oil. Even the chair inside there, I anoint. You have to be obedient to the voice of the Lord. And look what the Lord do tonight. The Lord will do something foolish to confirm the wise. I will say no further. There is a lady in here. You came to church tonight. You feel depressed and not feeling good in your body. You feel like you want to throw in the towel behind. It seems like pressure is on every side. Who is that person I'm speaking to? I will not call you out. I can, but I will not. Because I have to leave you to your field. The spirit of the Lord cannot lie. You're not feeling well in your body. You feel frustrated. You feel like you're not showing the towel behind. Who is that person? I don't run when God speaks. I have paid the price. I have paid the price. Mm, come to the front. Oh, Especially. glory, hallelujah. Jesus. Mm, what's the name of your husband? 